Warning. Although my content is usually family-friendly, Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney is a game that has been rated T by the ESRB rating system, and as such, will contain blood, language, suggestive themes, and violence. Viewer discretion is advised. Hey everybody, guess who's back for more Ace Attorney? It's me! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anyhow, let's just dive right into it today, because we got uh, half the trial left. Maybe a little more, but that's fine. I figured we'd be close to being done, but I don't know. All right, we are cross-examining April May for the second time, because she's already lied once, but the judge didn't care. Let's go! I did see everything I did! Hold it! So, you saw me then, too? <laughs> of course! I'd remember that spiky hair anywhere. Spiky? The witness will refrain from personal attacks on the defense attorney. <laughs> oh, was I a bad girl? I'm sorry. Very well, continue. The victim, the woman, dodged the first attack and ran off to the right! Hold it! Is that right as in your right as you looked from the hotel? Um, which hand do I hold my knife in again? Right! It was my right hand, right? Satisfied, Mr. Wright? Please continue. Then the girl in the hippie clothes ran after her. How convenient for you to remember her hippie clothes. <laughs> that's what you... I mean, that's what I was... she was wearing! Oh, and her hair was all done up like in a bun. <sighs> what happened then? And she hit her with that weapon! I saw it! I did! Where did this weapon come from? She picked it up from the desk. I see. What sort of weapon was it? That... that clock! Um, that kind of statue clock. The thinker, I think. A uh, clock? Didn't this come up in another testimony recently? Well, don't look so sour, Mr. Lawyer. You can't win them all. No, but I have a feeling I'm onto something now. The previous testimony must have been what Edgeworth wanted her to say. So this was the testimony in her own words? Time to press and squeeze the truth out of her. Figuratively, of course. Wow, Phoenix. So you already pointed this yeah. out. Yeah. How could she have known that this was a clock? Miss May? What you said just now was quite revealing. Revealing? Ooh. You'd like that, wouldn't you, naughty Mr. Lawyer? You just said that this statue of the Finker was a clock. But there's no way of knowing that just by looking at it. Uh. Another person in much the same position as you recently called this a clock, too. And he was found guilty of murder. <laughs> yeah, Frank saw it. We all remember yeah. him. Order, order. Miss May, can you explain how you knew this was a clock? Ooh. The witness saw the murder weapon with her own eyes. That's all that's important here. The defense is trying to confuse the issue with trivial concerns. Yes, yes, of course. You will withdraw your question, Mr. Wright. But questions are all I have, Your Honor. And as you may recall, I've caught murderers with these questions before. Well, only once. <laughs> Objection sustained. You may continue to question the witness. Whew! That was close. If he stopped me there, the trial would be over. Huh? What? So, what happens now? What happens now is you answer my question. How did you know it was a clock? What? Th that's... Because... I heard it? Yes! I heard it say the time! Wow. So, you've been to the lofts as a fan company? N no Hey, I didn't say that. Why would I go there? I heard from my hotel room. <laughs> the law offices of Fane Company, where the murder took place, are very close to the hotel. She could easily have heard the clock. Hmm, well, Mr. Wright, are you satisfied? No, Your Honor. Can't give up now. I'm not satisfied because she couldn't have heard it or it couldn't have run. Um... You can't take the sound out of it. No, wait. She was storing the papers in it. Mm -hmm. Would that have meant, made it not ring? 
I don't know. Well, like, I mean, I don't know what she took out of it. She took the clockwork out of it. Okay, then yeah, she couldn't have run. All right, well we'll say she couldn't have heard it. You were at the hotel. There's no way you could have heard a clock go off in the building next door. Sorry, did that hurt your ears? No. Oh, okay. My face is cold. Oh. You have proof that she could not. Uh. Amateurs, amateurs, listen to me, Mr. Wright. In the courtroom, proof is everything. Without it, you have nothing. You are nothing. Does Edgeworth ever be a defense attorney? Um, no. Okay. Well, maybe. Oh. Not in this game. Oh, okay. I will say no more there. Okay. Then I would like to propose a test to see if she really could have heard. <laughs> there goes the spit again. No, I don't want to suspend play. <laughs> the, prosec <laughs> the prosecution denies your request. What? I want grounds! This is a trivial matter with no direct bearing on the case at hand. Indeed, objections sustained. Damn! Time to switch directions, quick! Ready to proceed, Mr. Wright? No, Your Honor. I can't give up now. I'm not satisfied because... Oh, that was really nice. Your Honor, members of the court... It is inconceivable that the clock in question rain. It's empty. It's broken. The batteries are dead. Okay, empty, and empty. notice our penalties are not shown, so we can actually choose any of these and it won't affect us. So we don't even need to say states. It's broken. It, I think it's broken! The clock's busted! <laughs> you think? It's like the just, just look at it! Your Honor, please examine the clock. Hmm. Oh! See anything interesting, Your Honor? Well, I'm not sure I would call this broken, but I doubt it could ring. This clock is missing its clockwork. Oh! Oh, we actually got the right one. Whoops, we gotta go back. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it is inconceivable that the clock in question rang. The batteries on that clock must be dead! Must be, Mr. Wright? Your Honor, if you would inspect the clock... Hmm, very well. Oh, wait, is this it again? <laughs> well, Your Honor, are they? This clock has graver problems than dead batteries. This clock has missing its clockwork. Oh my gosh! I didn't think all three of well, those would get you the right answer. Since it didn't, it didn't look like it was going to go back, so I was like, "Oh, it might just do that." All right, it's empty. That clock is missing its clockwork. This way, we get to keep the music. Sure. How could you possibly just have a look as soon as you can? Oh, see anything interesting, Your Honor? It is as the defense says. This clock is missing its clockwork. It's quite... <laughs> it's quite empty. I love how the girl has not moved at all. Everybody's just like, <laughs> Hey, guys! Oh, this is Game Boy Advance assets, so... True. Mr. Wright, would you care to explain to the court the meaning of this? It is as you can see. The clock was empty. It couldn't have run. Therefore, this witness is a big fat liar. <laughs> well, Miss May? Quite a show you've put on for us, Mr. Wright. He knew the clock was empty. Somehow, he knew. I'm afraid you've forgotten one thing, however. Indeed, the clock is empty. As you say, it can't ring. However, we must ask, when was the clockwork removed? If it was after the witness heard the clock, then there is no contradiction. Oh, yeah. Hmm, that's true. That is a possibility. The clock might have been emptied after she heard it. And that is exactly what happened, Your Honor. Well, Mr. Wright, can you pro prove when the clockwork was removed? Call my fist <laughs> Impossible, of course. I have proof. W what? Wasn't it you who told me proof is everything? Well, I was listening. And now I'll show you the proof you like so much. Oh, man. The evidence that proves when the clockwork was removed is... Do you know? Um... 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 The uh, cell phone? Obviously. It's the attorney's bag! No. <laughs> <laughs> what do you say to that? I'm an attorney. What? I don't rightly understand what that's supposed to mean. I don't rightly understand either. <laughs> oh. Uh oh. I think I blew it. Mr. Wright, please refrain from flippant presentations of evidence in the future. S sorry, Your Honor. 
Oh, he didn't even penalize for a sad? Yeah, it's the cell phone. Okay. Take a look at this! Hmm, that's a very cute cell phone. Ooh, -hoo. you have a girly phone. R wait, I wait, this isn't my phone. Listen, this is the defendant's cell phone, and it contains a recording. A recording of a conversation she had with the victim on the day of the murder. Order, order. The defendant's cell phone? Th this wasn't brought to my attention! Oh my gosh. Perhaps Detective Gumshoe overlooked it. <laughs> <laughs> the good detective better remember he's up for evaluation soon. My heart goes out to you, Edgeworth. Not. Let's hear the conversation. I love Edgeworth's hunched over. <laughs> me too. <laughs> so you just want me to hold on to the thinker for you then? If you could. Ah, uh, I should probably tell you, the clock isn't talking right now. Huh? It's not working? That's lame! I had to take the clockwork out, sorry. September 5th, 9.27 a.m. Your Honor, I think this recording makes it clear that the clockwork was already gone. And this was recorded in the morning, before the witness even arrived at her hotel. I don't even know what that was. <laughs> well, Miss May, would you care to explain this to the court? Just how did you know that weapon was a clock? Well, well, isn't it obvious? I saw that clock before. Um, what store was that again? I, I go to so many. Oops, I forgot. So the witness had seen it before. That would make sense. Does the defense have any objections, Mr. Wright? It was gotten. No. Oh, right. Well, if she had seen it before, I guess... Wait a second. Then the court would like... Hold on! P please wait, Your Honor. Y yes? So you do have an objection? Um, yes, well... Mr. Wright, sorry, Your Honor. It's just... The witness claims she had seen it before. But this directly contradicts a piece of evidence already submitted to this court. Well then, let's see it. Please produce this evidence that will prove the witness had not seen the clock before. <laughs> Here is undeniable proof! <laughs> ha! Please, this is a court case, not some surrealist performance art piece. Hmm, perhaps the defense would like to change its mind? Please wow. produce this evidence that will prove the witness had not seen the clock before. Mm. The thinker, clock in the form of a statue. The clock's gears have been removed. Made, Made by, by Larry, Larry Butts. Not sold in stores. Batteries sold separately. Yep. <laughs> it's simple. This clock was never in any store. Ever. What? A friend of mine made that clock. Only two exist in the world. And the one that isn't here is in police custody. Impossible! Everything is sold in stores! Miss May, I think it's high time you went shopping for a better excuse. Oh, excuse is not on sale today? Uh, oh, oh, <laughs> this is terrifying. Oh my gosh! What is it to you, porcupine head? That stupid clock doesn't matter, okay? She did it! And she should die for it! Die! <laughs> that was amazing. <laughs> She is terrifying in this state, though. Whoa, whoa, whoa Let's not get ahead of ourselves! Th this is a court of law, and the witness will remain calm. I am like I guess I did. <laughs> Scary. <laughs> Miss May, let me ask. Tell me, how did you know the weapon was a clock? Hmm, oh dear. Does the defense have an opinion on this behavior? Okay, this is it. Yes, your honor. Allow me to explain how I see the truth of the matter. Miss April May, you knew the weapon was a clock before because you held it or you had heard about it. Um... Um... I don't know. Well, think about it, because we, I mean, you can't we saw who it. did it at the beginning. Yeah, we saw a dude with, like, her hair. She was staying with someone, so maybe it was that dude. 
Maybe she held it. I mean, you have to hear it. This is familiar territory. I'll just use the same approach as with Larry. Miss May held that very clock in her hands! Mr. Wright, what was this? When she used it to strike the victim, when else? Oh, man. Order, order! Mr. Wright, what is the meaning of this? April May, you killed Mia Fey, I say. And when you struck, the force of the impact made the finger ring. That's when you heard it. I don't think so. Right, you're ripping off your old court case. <laughs> tisk, tisk. You truly are of work of art, Mr. Phoenix Wright. Wh what's that supposed to mean? It was you who just proved that the finger was empty. Um. Oh. Ugh, of course it wouldn't rain. What's more, the witness has a rock-solid alibi. Oh, you know. We better go back. <laughs> oh yeah, cornered again. You had heard about it. The witness had never held the clock in her hand. However, she had heard that it was a clock. Okay. She heard? That is correct, Your Honor. There is no other way she could have known the thinker was a clock. And I can show you the proof. Well, this is interesting. Let's see it then. Show me evidence proving that the witness had heard the murder weapon was a clock. How do you keep this? This is my evidence. I, I want to show off like, all the dialogue, basically. This is my evidence. I'm afraid I'm not sure where you are going with all of this, Mr. Wright. Um, where? Well, it's not so much a place as a, er, uh, come to the end of your bluff, Mr. Wright. W wait, wait, that was, uh, practice! Here's the real <laughs> evidence! <laughs> Mr. Wright, this court does not condone the presentation of evidence for practice. Let's see your evidence for real this time, Mr. Wright. Evidence that the witness had heard the murder weapon was a clock. Um, by the wire tape. Or wire tap? The wire tape. The wire tap. The wire tape. <laughs> but what would that, like, prove, though, with the wire tap? Oh, I don't know. We can check. You haven't called in a while. There's something I want you to hold on to for me. It's a clock, and it's not talking. Oh, right she now. must have used it to hear the, the phone? Yeah. The defendant's cell phone. Yes, we've seen that already. Take another listen to the conversation between the defendant and the victim. Mia, what's up? You haven't called in a while. Well, actually, there's something I want to hold on you to hold on to for me. Again? What is it this time? It's a clock. It's made to look like that statue, the thinker, and it tells you the time. They do mention the thinker. But how would the witness know of this conversation? Do you have proof that she knew of the conversation? <laughs> Wait, no, not yet, Phoenix! <laughs> Stop, this is you're bad! This can't be right. I can't afford any mistakes now. Mr. Wright, your evidence, please. Have a look at this! <laughs> that? <laughs> I found this in Miss May's room. Everyone's like, it's an electronic device, so what? <laughs> Mr. Wright, please explain to the court what this is. Miss April May, you used a wiretap to listen to this conversation. That's how you knew the thinker was a clock. Am I wrong? I... I... Your Honor, this is ridiculous. Your Honor, look at the witness's face. Does she seem amused to you? The defense demands an answer. <laughs> Witness, answer the question. Did you tap her phone? Miss May? Shut up, all of you! What gives you the right to talk to me like that? You, you liar! Uh, it's not fair. All of you are ganging up on me like that. Oh, so I'm the bad girl, is that it? Is that it? <laughs> that did it. The court's yeah. seen the real Miss April May now. Now to deal the final blow. You did it, didn't you? Or why the wire tap? The wire tap. Let's do both, shall we? <laughs> That's. What, I hope people don't mind me doing this. <laughs> they probably don't. Miss May? What is it, you little shrimp? Talk to me in that tone of voice, will you? I didn't have a tone of voice. <laughs> You killed her, 
didn't you? Order! There will be order! What? How can you possibly say that? Are you all mad? All I did was a little wiretap. Oops! <laughs> so you admit you tapped your phone! I don't think she's coughing there, but that works. <laughs> but wait! I can do anything bad like murder! I'm a good girl! She says with the biggest evil stink face in the world. No kidding. <laughs> really? Can you prove it? The way she can prove it. You think you're so smart, Mr. Lawyer. But I can prove it, and I will! You can't be serious! No way! Way, I say! Way! Oh, and I assure you I'm serious, Mr. Lawyer. <laughs> okay, so, the killing happened around 9 p.m. at night. Oh, this is actually where it uh, converges with the other thing. Alright. Why did you tap her phone? <sighs> Answer the question! Do I have to? Isn't it a murder trial? Isn't it a tapping irrelevant? Ah, she's saying exactly what Edgeworth wants her to say. Miss May, you were tapping the victim's phone. I hardly call that irrelevant. While this court does not condone the defense's tone of speech, he has a point. Well, Miss May, do you have an explanation for the court? Can you prove you had nothing to do with this murder, even though you tapped her phone? Ha! I'd like to see her pull that off! Mr. Lawyer, I saw that evil, evil grin. You were probably thinking I'd like to see her pull that off, weren't you? Damn, she's good! Well, you're not the first man who's thought that. And of course, I can not and will. You can't be serious, no way! Way, I say, way. Oh, and I assure you I'm serious, Mr. Lawyer. Her face is different. Hmm. Okay, so, wait, the killing happened around 9 p.m. at night. Wait, you never noticed the difference between this face and the other one? Where her there eyes were, like, really tiny, like... <laughs> no, I noticed the difference. I'm saying last time when she was saying that sentence, she was oh. more like, ha, ah, and this time she was like, eh. Oh, interesting. Why, that's just when I was getting room service from that sweet bellboy. Room service? Iced coffee, I believe it was. Iced coffee, you know, like normal coffee, but cold! If you don't drink it quick, the ice melts and then you have regular cold coffee. Uh, ice coffee? Think I'm making this up? Ask the bellboy. Ergo, the witness was not on the scene at the time of the murder. Uh, but she was looking at the window and was like, Oh my gosh, police! Ah! So, where does that leave us? It is my great displeasure to inform you that the witness appears to have been tapping the victim's telephone. However, that is a separate crime with no bearing on the current case whatsoever. Her testimony stands. She saw the defendant, Maya Faye, commit murder. No! They're going to let her just walk away! There's no way I can win this unless I tie Miss May to the murder somehow. Well, does the defense have anything to say? Um, well, come on, think of something. Call the bellboy as a witness, or continue examining Miss May. Probably call the bellboy? Would be what you do, but... That actually is what you do, but... Okay. Right, on with the cross-examination. What exactly do you have left to examine, Mr. Wright? Miss April May has admitted to the wiretap, yes. But that bears no relevance to the case at hand, murder. There's no way you can just prove any connection. Uh-oh. Think! This can't be the end. But I'm out of evidence! Then I believe the cross-examination is over. Mr. Edgeworth, does the prosecution have any other witnesses to call? None, Your Honor. She's the last. What?! But, but that means... Maya's guilty?! W wait Your Honor! Yes, Mr. Wright? The defense would like to call the bellboy after all. <laughs> Way to say that now. Let's... The defense would like to call the hotel bellboy as a witness. There's something suspicious there, and I'm going to get to the bottom of it. I think you've sunken quite low enough already. I object to calling the bellboy. Wh why? What's your reason? 
because I hold that the wiretapping had nothing to do with the killing. However, if you agree to one condition, I'll consent to calling this witness. Condition? If Miss April May's alibi is not called into question after you examine the bellboy, then you will recognize that Miss April May was not the killer, thus she is innocent. She is innocent. Therefore, you must accept the verdict of guilty for Miss Maya Fay. That is my condition. What?! I'd better find something suspicious in that bellboy's testimony. Otherwise, Maya will be declared guilty on the spot. What should I do? Should we accept or... <laughs> Just give up? Is the other? <laughs> okay, if it said accept or deny, I would... That would be a little tougher. Just accept. Just go with it. Yeah, I know, but I mean, come on, I gotta show off all the dialogue. I'm doing this okay. partially for me as well. Ugh, I can't accept those conditions! Very well, the defense will refrain from calling the bellboy as a witness. I see. You may continue your cross-examination, Mr. Wright. Right. On with the cross-exam- Oh. <laughs> now it Oh, yeah. Okay. Accept the condition. Alright, I've got nothing to lose, except for, well, everything. Understood. I accept your condition. Hmm. Fool. You fell right into my trap. Uh-oh. Uh, um, wait. <laughs> Very well. The court calls the hotel bellboy to the stand. He's one of the only witnesses in the entire game that we never learned their name. Oh. I believe we're, re we're ready for the witness to testify. He certainly does look like a bellboy. <laughs> he brought tea? Yes, sir. I received your summons in the middle of work, sir. I'm happy to be of service. That tea set looks rather heavy, so without further ado, the witness may begin his testimony. Very good, sir. Miss May's room service! Witness <laughs> testimony! I am the head bellboy at the fine Gatewater Hotel, in business for four generations. Okay. I believe I received a call after eight in the evening from our guest Miss May. She asked for an iced coffee to be brought to her at nine o'clock on the dot, sir. I brought it to her at precisely the requested time, of course. And I delivered the iced coffee to our guest Miss May herself. I see. The defense may begin its cross-examination. Right. I'm ready. I hope. This is it. If I can't prove Miss May was involved with the murder now, Maya will be finished. Cross-examination. Miss May's whole room service. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. I'm the head bellboy. Um, excuse me. Hold it. Oh, wait. No. Uh, go back. I keep pushing the microphone button instead. What exactly is it you do at the hotel? Why, anything required of me, sir. Killing I, someone. <laughs> I check in guests, I check out guests. I clean rooms, I make beds. I even deliver room service, sir. I check Miss May in personally. Are you always so... so prim? Mr. Wright, you will refrain from asking frivolous questions. I believe I received a call after 8 in the evening. Are you sure it was Miss May on the phone? Absolutely, sir. How can you be so certain? I checked Miss May in personally, sir. Not only did I see her in all her stunning radiance, oh, but I also heard her voice. And then I saw them, and I... Ahem. Oh, <laughs> looks like he just got the chicken box. <laughs> the point being, I remembered her quite well, sir. Yes, what then? She asked for an iced coffee to be brought to her at 9 o'clock. A.M. or P.M. <laughs> 9 o'clock on the dot, you say? Yes, I confirmed that detail several times. She was watching a program on the TV and wished to drink it after she finished, sir. Nine o'clock, time of the murder. I brought it to her at precisely the poor requested time, of course. Uh, excuse me, I don't think you pressed this statement. Oh yeah, hold it! <laughs> precisely nine o'clock, then. Precisely, exactly, and most definitely, sir. Nine o'clock p.m. Oh. How can you be so sure? Miss May was quite insistent that it be brought then. Oh, bellboy, hehe, <laughs> I like, like, iced coffee at exactly nine o'clock. Something like that, sir. Therefore, I knocked on her door at the crack of nine o'clock, sir. Why would she be so particular about the time? And I delivered the iced coffee to our guest Miss May herself. You are sure it was Miss May herself? Absolutely, sir. <laughs> Absolutely? 
Yes, sir. As in, so very absolutely, sir. It's an endearing mannerism of mine. Alright. <laughs> How come you're so very certain? Well, when I brought the room service, sir, she, she the guest, sir, favored me with a, um, an embracer, sir. Embracer? Isn't that French for embrace? It's French for kiss, sir. But not a French kiss, sir. More of a peck on the cheek. I see. Why would she have done that? I believe, perhaps, she was momentarily swayed by my prim <laughs> demeanor, sir. It was a moment I shall never, ever forget, sir. Sounds pretty fishy to me. I think our Miss May was up to something and wanted the bellboy to remember her. It's no good! There's nothing there! Is... is that it? Finally, you understand. This bellboy has absolutely no reason to lie. Now, if you have any decency, you will end this rather tedious cross-examination here. Hmm, it was a bit tedious. The witness may leave the stand. I can't let this happen. Can I? Protest? Give up. <laughs> Why does it keep getting give up as an option? Give up. Like, who would actually give say up. that except me? Because I want to see all the dialogue. No. If I give up now, I lose everything. If I just give up the case, I'd be giving up the very reason I became a lawyer. Wait. Please wait. Alright, we'll go to protest now. Wait. Please wait. Yes? Does the defense have something to add? One last question. Let me ask one last question. Your Honor, I must object. This charade of justice has gone on long enough. No, no, Mr. Edgeworth. All right, Mr. Wright. I'll give you one more question. That's all. Okay. This is really it now. This is my last chance. What do I ask him about? Check-in, room service, or bed making? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, actually. I mean, it's not bed making. <laughs> what? We didn't examine the bed, really. Um, <laughs> it's probably check in, but. Do you want to know the truth? Sure. All of them work. Oh, all of them work? Yep. All right. Let's do check in first. That's the most obvious one. T tell me about check in. Tell me about when you checked in Miss May. Oh, all right. Very well, sir. My first thought was that she was a beautiful, beautiful person. She's just my type of girl, so it was a disappointment, really. I see. Excuse me, what exactly was a disappointment? Well, I am not without charm, sir, but even I'd have little chance with her lover there. What did he just say? What did you say? Ah, oh, uh, rather, quite. Bellboy, tell us the truth now. Did Miss May check in with another person? Oh yeah, but oh no, we gotta go back. We gotta talk about bed making. <laughs> Tell me again about uh, room service. Uh, again, sir? At exactly nine o'clock, I delivered room service to Miss May in room 303. The guest had requested iced coffee. Eighteen dollars was the charge, Holy as I cow. recall. That's expensive. I see. Eighteen dollars? Doesn't that seem a bit expensive? Y yes. Well, iced coffee for two, you know, and we don't skip on the ice, sir. He said? What did you say? <laughs> Alright. What is he gonna say about the bed? <laughs> bed, bed, bed making! <laughs> Tell me about making the beds that day. I was wondering <laughs> what you were going to ask, but bed making? A new no. <laughs> no, no, Mr. Edgeworth. <laughs> the witness will answer the defense's question. Yes, well, it was quite like any other day's bed making. I changed the sheets, the pillowcases, and then I proceeded to make the bed. I had to bring pillows for two, of course, but they're quite light, you see. I see, thank you. Pillows? All of these work? For two? <laughs> I am yep. shocked. Bellboy, what did you just say? Uh, uh, yes, pillows are light, sir. Bellboy, tell us the truth now. Was someone else staying in Miss May's room? <laughs> I object. That was objectable. <laughs> Objection overruled. The witness will answer the question. Uh, yes, I see. Why did you not mention this in your testimony? Uh, well, sir, you, uh, you didn't ask. Nice try. That's the sort of thing you're normally supposed to mention. Ah, yes, quite, indeed. It was the, uh, good barista there, Mr. Edgeworth, who... What? He 
you asked me not to mention it if I wasn't specifically asked, sir. Oof! <laughs> you, you fool! <laughs> <laughs> oh, Edgeworth, I've done it. I've won! Miss April May checked into a twin room with a man, correct? Yes, sir. Then, when you brought them room service, you didn't see that man in the room? That's right, sir. Hmm. Your Honor, we have just learned of another person involved who may have been the murderer. In this new light, I hold that it's impossible to judge the defendant. You agree, Mr. Edgeworth? Who? Who is this other person? Simple, it was... Miss April May. The man with Miss May. Or the bell <laughs> <laughs> No, it was the man. <laughs> yeah, it was, but I mean... Miss April May. <laughs> None other than Miss April May! Mr. Wright, you are a complete idiot! <laughs> eh? Have you heard nothing that has transpired so far? She has an alibi! She was in the hotel at the time of the murder. Oh, right. Mr. Wright! S sorry, Your Honor. Give me one more chance. Simple. It was... It was the bellboy, and none other! Well, this comes as some surprise. <laughs> Your Honor, Mr. Wright, I, it was the bellboy who confirmed Miss May's alibi. And this in turn confirms the bellboy's alibi. He was in the hotel. Well, sure, if you put it that way. I do put it that way, and I trust you will too. But what if they were in cahoots? You have evidence of this? Um, no, Your Honor. <laughs> Mr. Wright! Sorry, Your Honor. Give me one more chance. It was... The man with Miss May. The man who checked in with Miss May. Oof! Your Honor, as has been previously revealed, Miss April May has was tapping the victim's phone. Yet Miss May herself has an alibi at the time of the murder. However, that does not clear the man he was that was with her. The bellboy saw no one else in the room at the time of the murder. My, my. What a convenient little setup, but it's too late. Too late? I suppose you'd like it if it was too late, wouldn't you? After all, it was you who hid the presence of the other man from this court. Ruff! Upstart! Amateur! The, these accusations are... ludicrous. Enough! The court acknowledges the defense's argument. I expect the prosecution and defense to look into this matter fully. Am I understood? Yes. Yes, Your Honor. That is all for today for the trial of Maya Fey. Court is adjourned. September 7th, 2.24 p.m. How did that last the same amount of time that the first trial did? That, that was, was way like longer. way longer. <laughs> Mr. Wright! You were amazing in there! Even after I intentionally messed up in every single place? R really I think I might be your newest fan! Oh, I was just doing my job, you know. <laughs> then again, the other attorney was pretty cool too. Huh? The face of his, his eyes wide and trembling lips, it sent shivers up my spine! Hmm, if you say so. So, what happens with me? Do I get to go home now? Well, no. I don't think so. Not yet. Oh, I see. But I got a great lead in today's trial. A lead? That man with Miss May. He's the key. Oh, I get it. What happened to Miss May after that, anyway? I heard they arrested her. I guess she's learning her charms won't work everywhere. She's probably at the detention center now. I may have to go down there later. Yeah, the, they didn't arrest her, by the way, because she lied blatantly to the court. They arrested her just because of the wiretap. <laughs> it? Okay. Yeah. Anyway, this case is far from closed. Yes, sir! I'm going to find out more about this man. Do you think he was the one who... Maybe so. Sis. Don't worry, I'll find him by tomorrow. I promise. I'm counting on you! I thought that was the end of the case, but I guess it's not. <laughs> oh no, that's that's the halfway point of the case. I asked for a full record of Miss April May's testimony. I thought it might come in handy during the trial tomorrow, but now that I have it, I'm not so sure. Most of her testimony was all lies. In fact, there's only one part that got left on the record. May testimony was added to the court record. The testimony given in May, not her testimony. Oh. No, I'm, I'm joking. 
made testimony. The part <laughs> that remained, the victim dodged an attack and then ran to the right, but she was caught and struck. That was literally the only thing that wasn't a lie in her testimony. Wow. I don't know how much good this will do me at all now. Anyway, time to hit the pavement and do some investigating. Maya doesn't belong in that detention center, and it's up to me to get her free. To be continued. Gosh. Yeah, like this I said, the, like I said, the first case is ridiculously short. Save your stage data up to this point. But yeah, we're going to, and that's all the time we have for this episode. All Thanks right. for watching, everybody. Collar Forty and Marty signing out now, I guess. Next time. So, the way that the trials work now is, first case in every game is basically just the one trial period, and then after okay. that, it's generally two investigation periods and two trial periods. Oh. But the first game, they were still getting the formula right, so I think, actually, every case after this, it's three investigation periods and three trial periods. And then people, the Capcoms realized, oh wait, that's way too much, so then... That, I, think okay. this, I think this is the only game that has free trial periods and then free okay. investigation periods at once. That is nice. Anyways, we'll be doing the next investigation period. Maybe we'll get through it in one sitting. It's short, I think it's shorter than the other okay. one. Okay. I can't, okay. I can't quite remember. It's, sure. I think it's a little shorter. Anyhow, have a great day and God bless.